Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting right now. Um, it's myself, Darshan Devakaran. I'm the, uh, I work with North Carolina Department of Transportation. I'm here just to moderate, and I'll be calling upon Kevin Dean from uh, Kitty Hawk to take over. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. So my name is Kevin Dean. I'm an account executive with KittyHawk.io. Kitty Hawk is a drone operations and fleet management platform where we've developed tools for both operators in the field and administrators back at headquarters. So I work with groups of all different sizes from many different industries, helping them better manage their operations. So whether that's getting started off on the right foot or helping them continue successfully scale and provide value to their organizations. Uh, today, we're just going to be taking a, a higher level view over some of the, the data we should be focused on around our drone operation, um, what we're tracking, and a little bit of the how. And so whether you're involved in construction, GIS, agriculture, public safety, I mean, real estate, all the way through even car sales, you know, aviation is not necessarily part of your core business. So. If you want to use drones in your operations, there are a few things that we need to be thinking about so we don't find ourselves on the wrong end of a conversation with either the FAA or the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board. And there are numerous trainers and consultants that uh, would be happy to go into this with more detail uh, specific to your needs. So please just kind of treat this as an overall uh, primer, you know, not necessarily all inclusive. Because as we get into each operation, each operation will need its own customization uh, for things like procedures, certificates, different level of training, even operations and general management. So I'm going to assume that we've already been able to find some sort of value for using drones in your operation, whether this is an increase in time efficiency, keeping workers safer, or providing better data and information than traditional methods could. These are the essential cornerstones for developing a drone operation. Excuse me. And once we understand where these tools will provide some additional value for us, the next concern that would be focused on is, is understanding the basics of the laws and regulations. So a solid understanding of both uh, local and federal regulations will be critical to the smooth implementation of a drone operation. And even if this has all been thought out and detailed, We'll still need the ability to track some of this, some of the metrics, and measure the success of our program over time. And there are plenty of resources out there on becoming a 107 pilot uh, and simply just passing the test. And there's even some advanced courses out there for uh, specific applications like GIS mapping, 3D modeling, collision reconstruction. So aside from getting into the specifics, we're just going to focus on General, generalities of what we should focus on across applications and industries. So I just alluded to some regulations so we can dive in and see if the FAA has any input on this particular topic. Which, by the way, if your aircraft registration stickers aren't on the outside of your aircraft as of Monday, we're no longer compliant. Just a quick reminder there. So does Part 107 require us to log our flights alone not necessarily. Part 107 does not explicitly require us to log flights, and we're not actually required by law to log our flight data at all. But if we do take a look at some of the regs and advisory circulars, we can discern that the FAA absolutely recommends that we keep a daily flight log. So to quote, record keeping of documented maintenance and inspection events reinforces owner operator responsibilities for airworthiness through systematic condition for safe flight determinations. Maintenance and inspection record keeping provides retrievable empirical evidence of vital safety assessment data defining the condition of safety critical systems and components supporting the decision to launch. So basically, do you have proof that you knew ahead of time that the flight was going to be both safe and compliant? And looking at section 107.7, a remote pilot in command owner or person manipulating the controls of a small unmanned aircraft system must, upon request, make available to the administrator any other document, record, or report required to be kept under the regulations of this chapter. Now this is clearly indicating maintenance logs and our compliance information um, and being maintained in some sort of system of record at a minimum. 
And we may also get into some additional requirements if we're operating under any waivers or COAs from the FAA. So while it may not explicitly be required by law, solely under Part 107, the FAA offers strong recommendations to do so and track our flight logs and maintenance activity. And put simply, if anything bad does happen that's related to our drone operations, ultimately it's gonna be us and our company that will be held liable in court. And if there is a case that's brought against us, you can bet that they'll use any official documents from the FAA and NTSB in that case. And where do you think those entities will generate, what data are they using to generate their reports? Because when they do go to investigate, they leave nothing unturned. They'll go through your training, your documents, certification, a high level view of all your operations um, to understand how involved you were with the drone program. And this is why it's important to have a plan in place and have all these ducks in a row clearly laid out before maybe even implementing or flying that first flight for any particular company. So first and foremost will be our pilots. Do we have the 107 certificate? Is it up to date? Are we tracking when it expires? And we may even need to track some additional certifications like here in North Carolina with the NCDOT's UAS Operators Knowledge Test. And maybe you've even received additional training or certifications from third parties specific to your industry. Once we know that we're at least tracking any pilots good to fly, we should also be tracking how often they fly or their currency and recency. If we're deploying an operator, say, in a disaster response scenario, would you want to deploy a pilot that has maybe 12 hours already this week or one that hasn't flown at all in the past 60 days? And without tracking this information and without an easy way to access it, this decision could simply be left up to guesswork. And if we know our pilots are compliant, what about the aircraft? Are you absolutely positive that the aircraft we just assigned to that same disaster response scenario wasn't damaged at all in last week's training session? We should know how many flights have occurred since it's been run through a maintenance checklist and whether the batteries are still within their usable lifetime so we don't run into any issues in the field. Do we know the last time someone even checked the batteries or ran them through a deep cycle? And if we wanted to double check any of this information, are your maintenance logs accurate, up to date, or even available to anyone else? So let's say both the drone and the pilot are good to go. What else do we need to be tracking? With each flight, we're potentially in unique airspace, weather, and authorization scenarios. And the weather, you know, what were the weather conditions during the flight? How about the wind direction? And how do we even know that our pilots even looked at airspace before the flight? Administrators should have the ability to look at any historical flight and determine what airspace we were in and whether or not we were compliant. And if we're operating under any of the waivers, the COAs, or even Lance, it should also be easily accessible for anyone auditing our records. And even better, will we have a way to view these authorizations and approvals on top of maybe our own, our own map so we can tell a go, no-go type situation immediately? It should be as simple as possible to determine whether any given flight, future or past, is compliant or not. So apart from situational awareness and general airspace safety, logging our flight data has some other uses too. For instance, we've seen some commercial enterprise groups out there recoup the cost of developing their drone program simply by renegotiating workers' comp and insurance rates. This can be done whether by re reclassifying workers to a lower risk category or even by paying for insurance on a scalable rate that's determined by our pilot safety score. And these would both be reliant on accurate logs and from our system and processes in place, we'll be able to have that kind of data to back it up. And another facet that simply by logging our flights and keeping track of our flight activity, we'll be able to stand out as an entity in our own industry. So our system of record can essentially become part of our marketing now. So think of a drone service provider out there that can say how many flights they've flown or how many satisfied clients they've worked with. And this can all be an example for an expertise in your particular application or customer satisfaction. And so these are just a few examples that um, 
can be tracked by maintaining a digital flight log. And as activity picks up and our schedules get filled up through the year, this will also increase the demand on our aircraft and possibly multiple aircraft. And hinting back at maintenance, can we accurately recall when we last changed our props or when we need to replace our batteries? Most likely not. And yet another example of where using a digital log to keep and track our maintenance and flight activity will pay off in the long run. So question I get a lot is paper or digital? We work with many clients in oil and gas, energy, critical infrastructure, even public safety sector. And many of these groups have cited data security concerns for the reason for initially maintaining paper logs. Now, there are platforms out there that take security seriously. And we've even been able to alleviate some of the concerns with flying foreign made hardware. Maybe you've seen some of the articles from the DOD or US Army where um, data leaks and foreign IP connections cause a concern for keeping our data maybe somewhere on a cloud. Uh, but beyond this, sharing the data is even easier if it exists in electronic form. We can easily generate a report or print it out if needed, but because it's electronic, we can slice and dice this information as needed and come up with our own comprehensive reporting. And if it's uploaded automatically, even better, because then it's always available to view and understand at any given time, and we can gain whatever insight into our program. So to elaborate on some of these insights, just wanna share a couple examples from the insurance industry and the telematics industry. I know not the most exciting examples, but bear with me. If we look at property and casualty insurance, we see some interesting trends. So PwC estimates that drones saved the insurance industry something like $7 billion last year. And it seems like a no-brainer that an organization like Travelers will be soon approaching 1,000 pilots. And these are all just insurance adjusters that now have a new tool in their tool belt. And learning from fleet management and telematics, we can see the benefit of tracking things like our driver's operations to ensure they're following the laws, the speed limits, traffic flow, and even best practices for operating the vehicle, like braking and accelerating. And this has proven extremely useful time and time again. And so another quick example of UPS estimates that uh, if they could reduce the amount their trucks drive by just one mile per driver per day, could save the company something like $50 million in a year. And that's a huge gain for just a minor efficiency improvement. And what other benefits could we deduce from other early adopters and technologically motivated companies? Well, at the end of the day, it's all about the data. Collecting the data, storing it, managing it, and crunching the data to make more sense of all these different inputs. So at Kitty Hawk, we have a saying, and it goes something like, one drone solves many problems, many drones creates many problems. And this is just a quick example of how many data points can be generated from each flight. So a single flight can generate over 10,000 data points. And as the team grows, this data increases as well. 100 operators conducting five flights a day equals something like 25 million data points a week. And that's a lot of data. I'd say maybe even, even enough to call it big data. And as companies in every industry begin to adopt this technology, I've seen different ways that groups are out there managing their information. Initially, with a handful of pilots, we see things like um, sp uh, spreadsheet trackers and paper checklists, disconnected training and operations procedures. So I, I spoke with a client who actually described one of their employees' car, and that's kind of how I imagined it. And he said, you know, getting a checklist or a flight log out of the sky, it was like every other, every other mission. So there were all these gaps. And this might be manageable for, you know, just a handful of pilots. But as we scale and grow and become, up, especially for the numbers like an entity like Travelers, this way of managing the data is just no longer feasible. You know, it becomes really cumbersome and complex. And if the data doesn't make it into the system, then our reports at the end of the day will be useless. I think about the old adage, guy go, garbage in, garbage out. So at a slightly higher level, we'll need to be managing the flow of data in that previous example, a way to manage our work orders from assignment through completion. And we'll also need the ability to track and separate upcoming missions versus those that have already passed. How do we know and how soon do we know once an operator completes a flight? 
the results should be as easily accessible for the person who requested the flight that might be in a separate department or even another region. So we'll also need a process for approving and denying these potentially risky missions. And more specifically, how much risk are you willing to accept? Because risk is more than just losing money or replacing a drone. At the end of the day, it's about how much damage you're willing to put on the line to you and your company's reputation if an event lands you in the news or has the FAA or NTSB come calling. And we also see the need to track whether our pilots are pre-flighting the aircraft before the flight. And this might not be as imperative on an aircraft like the Mavic Pro. Just about anyone could figure out how to unfold it and get it ready for a flight. But once we graduate to larger, more expensive platforms, we'll also want to ensure that the pilots are properly pre-flighting the aircraft and configuring it like for the Matrice 210 RTK. Now you may already have a checklist already put together on paper, spreadsheet, or PDF document, but would it also be useful to track when and where our pilots are conducting this pre-flight? Are they actually in front of the aircraft with it on scene before the mission? And maybe you've also documented a procedure for swapping batteries mid-mission. Do you know how long it's been since someone even ran a maintenance checklist for that aircraft? And is there a need to track maybe items that fall between federal regulations and internal policies? And for this, I, I think of maybe an arrival on scene, like we, we're all familiar with the trucks you'll see on the side of the road. They'll have their parking brake on, the cones out on the corner, their lights are going. You'll see the employee in their high visibility vest, maybe a hard hat, some kind of personal protective equipment. So these are things, these are thoroughly developed processes that companies will still want to track even if it's a drone team being deployed. So in this scenario, we've successfully assigned a, a mission to a pilot that has now gone out and conducted a flight. How do we know? Do we have a way to track this? And once completed, we'll also need a process for retrieving any pictures, thermographics, videos. Do we manually take the SD card out, upload via computer, or do we have the ability to upload straight to the cloud or to a private server? It should be as easy as possible for the person that requested the flight that needs the data to retrieve it once the flight is completed and with as little lag time in between as possible. Now advances in this technology are continually shaping the aspect of uh, this aspect of drone operations and data management in general. Trends are bringing this data more and more into real time metrics. Eventually managers will rely on the ability to track this information in real time, watching where our team is flying. It, and as they deploy, the ability to jump in and view a stream from that drone on demand, and better yet, to actively communicate the pilot without disrupting the operation by calling or texting them. And putting our administrator hat on, we should have the ability to track this information at a very high level. So at any given time, we can assess the operational status of the entire program. Are our pilots all certified and current? Is each aircraft registered, compliant, and up to date on our maintenance? Did we fly any non-compliant flights last month? Are we able to dig deep into rich data from each mission and flight, or is it just a line entry on a spreadsheet? Because electronically, we can, again, slice and dice this data any way we want for our reports. And these processes also need to be repeatable and support the ability to scale with multiple teams if necessary. So we've taken a look at the ins and outs of what data we should be tracking throughout our drone operation. And as the industry and each individual operation continues to grow, we'll need more comprehensive information and a seamless ability to track <clears throat> and access it than ever before. Drones are a disruptive technology, and those that are currently involved will be on the forefront of the industry. However, all too common do we see entities adopting this new technology, but using cumbersome and rudimentary methods for tracking their data. A flight operation and fleet management platform like Kitty Hawk can help digitize this entire workflow and provide the foundation for which to start or expand your program. <clears throat> Excuse me. So time is priceless. If we can adopt a way to more autonomously track this information and save your pilots and administrators time in the office and get them back out in the field where they provide the real value, instead of in the office managing and, or updating a spreadsheet, We've saved some program administrators hundreds of hours a year by supporting their operations with things like custom API integrations and webhooks. Now, this is a huge time saver, 
And it's hard to believe some organizations still have a physical a person copying and pasting information between platforms. So Kitty Hawk wants to help digitize this entire workflow, provide a, a streamlined process to mitigate the risk of expanding a drone operation and save your organization time and money on top of the benefits from implementing a drone program. It all comes down to how efficiently we can capture this data at the end of the day. These efficiencies will continue to increase to where we can crunch a lot of this info in real time. For instance, we can already track things like live telemetry for UTM or inter-USS, live streaming with audio to communicate with the pilot, or even like a last reported GPS location of an aircraft. And yet all these are really table stakes compared to what's possible in the near future with big data, 5G, and even analytics like AI and machine learning. These promise to continue improving the way we process and review this information, and especially with drones. With the right type of analytics, complex data can solve even anomalous behavior, whether it's a pilot taking off without authorization or pre-flighting the aircraft. And it becomes clear that tracking this data will not only remain a manual process, nor will processing and reviewing it, but these trends show that this data will become less of a nice to have, but more of a must have as businesses look for the next competitive advantage, efficiency increase, or new opportunity. In summary, none of this is, is extremely difficult, but it does take time and planning. So like anything worth doing, it's worth doing right. You'll be glad you did. Thank you. And happy to take any questions or feel free to grab me afterwards. Oh, yes, sir. Does Kitty Help support feature services or title services for uh, other GIS enterprise applications? So we've done a couple, um, say, more media integration. So t getting the information off the aircraft and uploaded into a server for then, you know, post processing or laying out on some kind of uh, geo reference map for you know your own use. So while it's not integrated that's definitely the direction the platform is moving. So we have some basic tools like automated flights, but in the near future, we'll, we'll be able to offer, you know, the lawnmower pattern where you can define, you know, the overlap camera angle and it'll autonomously go out and capture it. And then you can ingest that data into whichever platform you're using. Anyone else? Yes, sir. So for uh, agencies uh, where you, uh, for example, public safety agencies, you have law enforcement, fire departments, and uh, other uh, agencies like DOT and all involved, uh, do you see that uh, uh, there is a way to integrate all these things into uh, all the fleet management systems into uh, and take, are able to share data and stuff? So especially for that example, yes, we're able to have the idea of teams and users within the platform. So not only for public safety where, you know, municipalities come together, whether it's for an emergency or disaster response, um, but even think of a contract pilot out there that might be working for several different entities. Those entities also want to own their own data, their own flight log information. So with Kitty Hawk, you're able to jump back and forth between these different groups. Um, and be able to you know, track, let's say, my flight hours as a pilot, but across these different organizations as well. And do they have the feature to share data uh, within this? Yes, so for someone like a, a program administrator, you know, so, so with that same kind of example, a pilot, let's say, that's part of the highway patrol or police department, isn't necessarily gonna need access to the information from a fire department or DOT. So we can compartmentalize that type of information, but for, uh, let's say, like the DOT entity at a higher level, they can be a, an administrator as part of those teams so that we can generate reports, we can look at trends, and we can get a little more data, whether it's per division or for like a statewide program as a whole.
Okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe there's some weird like gotchas in the law there where I, I see your point about just handing the that one article versus handing over your phone. Um, in that kind of scenario, I, I wouldn't see why just holding the phone and saying, here's my certificate, you know, here's my authorization to be here, here's our permission to be on premise. And you know, instead of, uh, I might be messing the legal term up, but instead of forfeiting your phone to someone like the FAA or NTSB, you, know, you can still maintain possession of it and show them a digital copy of those same, same records. Sure, anything else? I think that's it. Thank you guys. I appreciate your time.